Oh, good morning, everybody. Once again, it is 11 o'clock. As of the Akopsumitul Tragudi will interrupt the song because we have joining us as we do each and every Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Mandy Frangidakis of 12 Points Wealth Management, joined by Stamatis Astras. Gentlemen, good morning. Kalimera, and what a beautiful day we have today. Kalimera, good morning, everyone. Kalimera, Kalimera, yes. Uh, Not bad. Uh, so, uh, no, not bad, uh, not bad at all. Uh, Money, uh, another down day. Uh, September, October, as uh, you have said, uh, they are uh, historically the worst uh, uh, months, right? Uh, those started uh, down, started with, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, 300 points uh, uh, down. Uh, so uh, higher yields, is that, uh, is that what everybody is looking at? Yep, I think everyone finally caught on to what we've been saying for the last year and that it was going to be higher for longer, that it was going to become very difficult for the Federal Reserve to reverse course and that the rate cuts that were projected in the bond market for 2024 would not uh, you know, take place at least early on in the year. And that is a message that's now being reflected across Wall Street, as you've seen asset prices drastically change over the last two months. Um, it's definitely been a rocky and volatile market, uh, to say the least. But, you know, we still face a number of headwinds, including the fact that just, I mean, you know, we've been elevated. You know, people are questioning why hasn't this recession occurred? You know, it's been forecasted for over a year now. Well, because consumer spending has been pretty strong. But as we can see in retail stocks and other parts of the economy, it's starting to drop pretty quickly. In, uh, you know, two days ago, you had student loan payments. Uh, kick back in on a federal level. So that's $10 billion a month that will be pulled out of the economy that will now go towards servicing student loan debt. That's uh, that's big. I mean, there were a lot of uh, news articles about, uh, again, you, you put the aggregate amount, $10 billion a month, uh, but there were a lot of articles from families on how they, all of a sudden they got to pay three to $700 a month. And, yeah. and for in a working family, that's an extra payment that they got to cut uh, from someone. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, interest on credit cards have gone up, interest on car loans have gone up. You know, for those who have purchased a home recently, obviously you have a higher mortgage rate compared to the rest of the marketplace. Um, You know, unfortunately, consumers are getting hit from all levels. Not only do you have inflation, uh, but you have these debt service costs that have increased drastically. Um, yeah. And that's, gonna, I think, going to be the kicker. I mean, you know, everyone's expecting that we go back to this rosy environment um, after COVID and what we took place over the last year. But unfortunately, we're not. Um, it was the quickest rise in the cost of capital in Wall Street history. We've never raised rates the way that we did. It was a violent rate rise. And now that is going to take some time to be, you know, to be fed through the economy. But it is starting to work. And don't forget, the Fed wants to induce this. The Fed wants to cause a, uh, a recession. The Fed wants to create the unemployment rate to rise. So they're going to keep their foot on the gas in terms of rate rises and keeping rates elevated probably longer than anyone expects. Has anybody told them there's an election? Well, that's the, that's the thing, Stamati, and that's one of the, the conundrums facing Wall Street right now because you've never had a bad or down year during an election cycle, right? Because who's going to want that? You know, Biden certainly doesn't want to have the economy in a weak spot as he's running for re-election. Um, and the Republicans at the same time don't want to be looking as if they haven't done much with control of the Senate and the House over the last couple of years in the same exact time frame. So the other kicker, though, is that the market right now is pricing in 10 percent earning growth for 2024 compared to 2023. I find that, extru- uh, that I find that a very high hurdle to uh, to get over to satisfy this market. And unfortunately, I do think that markets and investors um, will not be too happy with uh, trying to meet those expectations because we're seeing it right now. Margins are compressing. Companies are laying off. Rapid7 just went through another layoff cycle. A bunch of our technology companies are uh, laying off some of their staff. So it's starting to, you know, it's starting to take shape. Um, But that is the biggest question is, you know, what does 2024 look like? I think that you could have somewhat of a flat year. I think you actually get a really bad end of 2023. I think that the fourth quarter probably uh, continues to trade sideways and lower, and that sets you up for some kind of a small recovery in 2024. 
but I wouldn't be surprised if your recession starts in 2024, you have somewhat of a flat year in stock prices due to the election, and then we continue to take our pain in medicine. Yeah, I want your opinion, Manny, on, you know, despite all of that, and just yesterday driving, you know, I was driving from Merrimack Valley back to the South Shore, and I don't know what it was. It was a beautiful day. I, I saw so much, particularly in Boston, actually the whole stretch of ride, cranes, building, this, that, all over the, you know, despite all of this this news. And, you know, what went through my head is, you know, how are they going to fill this space, especially within the next, you know, couple of years, realistically? Yeah, but the thing is, Teddy, is those projects are probably projects that uh, – had started way before all of this that were already in the budget because Mm -hmm. unfortunately I'm talking to folks that are in the same industry and their pipelines have drastically dropped compared to where they were the last two, three years. So a lot of them have current work. It's what's coming next. That has been, that has a massive question mark around it. Yeah. The old backlog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. The backlog has drastically dropped compared to where it was over the last five, six years, whether you're in, you know, the cement industry, whether you're in development, whether you're a general contractor, you know, any one of the unions or trades. Very interesting. Very interesting. You know, I've had discussions with many, you know, many of us, you know, in the Greek American community, we talked amongst ourselves, you know, everybody's a little bit, you know, on, on pins and needles, you know, trying to evaluate everything, every dime, Dorchmark and drachma that's being, you know, spent out the door, even evaluating personnel and making sure that everybody's, doing so it's kind of a very delicate subject because you know you know it it, you know things were great but when you really have to especially for small business owners when you got to reevaluate there's also you know you know it came up through several people you know kind of paranoia about trying to get rid of somebody because of you know discrimination and what's going on on the opposite side of the spectrum you know, what are you seeing out there from that? You know, these big companies that have to do layoffs, uh, you know, how vulnerable are they? They're pretty vulnerable. Yeah. Um, because don't forget, you know, a lot of the companies we're talking about, different on Main Street, right? But it's also different when you're a publicly traded company where we're really talking about the 500 largest companies in the world and in the United States. It's a meaningful impact, right? So their bonuses are structured based off of stock price. And stock price is based off of performance and earnings. So... You know, even if you see a slight drop, I mean, that's what they're getting ready for. They're getting ready for their wartime chest. Um, you know, bury the hatchets and get ready for this coming downturn. Um, you know, even if you listen to the earnings calls from any of the CFOs or CEOs of these companies, no one's really sending out a rosy, uh, you know, kind of forecast of mm-hmm. where they expect to be. So, unfortunately, yeah, I think that, you know, there is, a, you know, more pain ahead of us. And that's okay because, you know, we can't make the business cycle or the credit cycle just become non-existent. You do have periods of time where you have the economy expand and you have times where the economy contracts. And then right now we're in one of, you know, in an aggressive contractionary mode. And it's due to the fact that we had to raise the cost of capital from zero to six and a half percent and now keep it there longer than what the market was originally anticipating. Very interesting. Very good. Stamati, any closing comments? Well, yeah, that's, don't forget, uh, you know, oil uh, is, is where it is. That's another thing that is, is another big, uh, big problem on the, on the economy. And uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, effort on, uh, you know, innovation and uh, new, new things that are, are happening. So you, you do see some shooting stars uh, here and, and there. Uh, but lo- long term is, is what money is and uh, if the interest rates are stupid. Yep, that's it. Wherever the cost of capital is dictates where the economy is. If you can predict where the U.S. dollar is going or where the cost of capital is, you can pretty much predict any market. Yeah, very good. All right, we're going to have to close out, unfortunately, on a bad note as our New England Patriots' uh, worst performance um, in Bill Belichick's coaching career um, not looking too good for our Patriots. Nope. Teddy, what did you say the other, last week? You said you had him down for five wins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think you're right. I think, actually, you might be lucky to get the five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Que Polaine, yeah. as we say, as some friends of us. Que Polaine. Que Polaine. But nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, you know, poor performance. Um, you know, there's not, you, you're at a loss of words. You don't really know what to say. Um, it was never a ball game. They're weak at multiple different uh, pockets of the field. I think it's going to be, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a struggle to get to maybe five or six wins this season, and that's saying something. Yeah. And then, you know, the real question is, is, does that make Bill Belichick, you know, jump on the hot seat? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what, what number of wins or losses does uh, he start to feel some pressure? Yeah, no doubt. Because no doubt. obviously to this point he's had zero pressure. Yeah. 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 Time will tell. Manny Stamati, always wonderful. 12 points, wealth management. Manny Frangidakis joins us live right at 11 o'clock each and every Tuesday. And once again, uh, consultation with Manny. He welcomes it 617-212-8343. 617-212-8343. Gentlemen, have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll regroup again soon. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to continue with more music here on Grecian Echoes. Mike Janity is also in the house. <laughs> 